off. Although this typical day of mine might seem overwhelming to some people much older or much younger than myself, this is actually considered normal among my peers. I guess you could say this sort of lifestyle might be a generational thing. Generation Y has been enormously written about, having been analyzed for how they feel entitled, how much money they owe, their educational background, and especially how they're doing in the job market. Being part of Generation Y, I wondered, why are we so fascinating? After reading a few articles, I began to think about it more closely. Having completed two college diplomas and currently completing a university degree, while balancing a full-time shift-like job, I realized that I and many others around my age range are stuck in a revolving door between post-secondary education and our careers. From my own experience, it's been a long journey towards a future in the criminal justice field, but it's been well worth the effort for me. I interviewed my friend Martin, who is also from the infamous Generation Y, to see what his experience has been like. Um, I, I graduated um, last year. Right now I'm doing, um, I'm, I'm studying French so I could get eventually into teacher's college because I want to teach French. And so I'm just getting my credentials ready right now. Um, like, um, weekly schedules were very heavy because, um, you know, I would work a full shift to go to class and at the same time I would be tired whilst in class. You know, work and school was very heavy to balance and, you know, I would never have weekends because then in order to make up hours or to have enough money to pay for everything I would have to work weekends all the time you know and every semester tuition fee goes up a hundred dollars so is it like a lot of shift work that you were doing or you're still doing that type right now I'm still doing the same thing because um, I don't have enough credentials to become a teacher yet and so I still do shift work. Um, I would have at least 10 hours of lectures or between 10 to 15 hours of lectures. And then, because I'm a science student, each lecture or each class may have um, a three hour laboratory included and a tutorial. So um, on a normal week, it would be 20 hours of classes and laboratories. And you know, you always, you also have to prepare for classes, do some readings, make, do, um, do research, um, read papers, do essays, write lab reports, things of the like. Um, and you know, um, and then on top of that, I would have to work as well. So, you know, it's a lot of hours. I, I don't know how I was able to do it because I would go to school full time and I vividly remember I had two jobs <laughs> because one job would not provide enough money or hours so I had to supplement with something else. Well, first of all, my family isn't um, a family that's well off. Um, the money that my parents would be earning would be to pay for all the bills, things li like that, mortgage, and for j us to live on. So, and they didn't have any extra money to get us, to put us in university. And, you know, per semester, um, the full-time school would cost $3,500 to $4,000. And then you also have things like school supplies of course and then you have things like books and every book as a science student you know if you don't buy brand new i know if you have to buy brand new and sometimes they keep changing the edition and you'll have to buy the new books because assignments would not be on the same pages or um new things have been added you know, and each book would cost at least 200 dollars. so and then you also have to buy laboratory manuals, things like that, and lab coats, you know, things add up. 
um, you know, you so people, we have to eat as well. Not just, we don't even, um, on top of the books, you'll have to buy food, you know, because I'm constantly busy. People like me, you don't always have the time to cook at home. You'd all have to buy and eat out. Things like that add up too. Of course, a lot of my friends were like that, you know, and people, um, people from my class were also like that, you know, um, I don't know how people like us do it, because we are, at the same time, we're humans as well, we have to have a social life, not so much a social life, but, you know, we all have to talk to people, a little bit of interaction, not just with you and your books. From today, it's been 10 years to this day that um, I know very few people from high school that have got their own careers and um, other people seem to have given up on the idea and have just had ch children instead. Um, I, you know what, I see myself as um, I will have um, done by then, my post-secondary degree of um, teaching, and I'd probably be a substitute teacher in, in, in a public school. So do you feel the lifestyle that you've carried on for so long right now will interfere in you getting to that point in five years? Um, you know what? It's very possible, because um, as it stands, tuition fee keeps getting higher, and wages are not getting are not increasing to the rate that the cost of living does. So yes, it is very possible that you know it, it, I might not be even I might not even be able to um, get to where I want to be in the next five years. It may take another seven or more, depending on how things go. Anyway, Emily, I'll have to go now because I've got class in five minutes. <laughs> okay. Generation Y continues to be a big phenomenon that keeps one wondering if the generations to come will carry on this torch or will they have it go a little more differently than it did for us. Perhaps what's so fascinating is that we're capable of doing so much all at the same time and that we still have the ambition to get there. As for our careers, it will be interesting to see how most of us have done or are still doing in the next five years.